Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and to this short video where I'm going to show you step by step how to create a very simple background in soft pastel. If you enjoy this here then please do subscribe to me here on YouTube. Also I have lots more in-depth real-time tutorials like this on my Patreon channel. I'll add links in the description below. Today I'm going to talk you through how to create a very simple type of background that I like to use a lot in my work. Have you ever wanted to create a nice outdoors feel in your background but without having to go into detail, painting lots of foliage, making a background very complicated? Well this is a great option if you want to add a splash of colour, maybe a sense of being outdoors in either your people portraits, pet portraits, wildlife, it works with everything. And as I said, I've used this idea many times in previous portraits of all sorts, even some wildlife pieces like this one I have here. But the piece that I'm going to use today to demo this is my recent portrait of three spaniels. And you can see that the piece is already framed and has been approved by the three models themselves. Now you can find other tutorials from this painting giving you tips on how to paint the dogs themselves, but in this tutorial I'm going to focus just on the background and talk you through how I created that. You can also see in another video that I have here on YouTube how I actually came up with this composition for this piece because it was taken from three separate photographs of the dogs. So you can find out exactly what I do in the process of creating a composition as well in my other video. But let's take a look at the background on this one. These are the colours that I've used in only the background. So when I make more tutorials from this piece on my Patreon channel, I will share the full colour list for the dogs as well. I've used Claire Fontaine pastel mat for this painting, but I always use the exact same methods on whatever paper I'm using. I would recommend that if you're using a rougher, more sanded type of paper that you maybe use some blenders as this method is heavy on the fingertips if you're using a rough paper. Like I mentioned before, this is my photo composite that I came up with on Photoshop and you can see in my other video exactly how I came up with this background to give me a rough idea of what colours I was going to use, what feel I was going for in the painting. And I really wanted a kind of vibrant yet at the same time slightly washed out look that you might get on a really bright morning, um, a misty morning with bright sunlight like what we're getting on the dogs. And I really did use this as the inspiration for what to do with the background, what kind of marks to make, what colours to use. But of course you can go completely off plan and be quite imaginative with these backgrounds too. This is the brown colour of pastel mat. I decided to use a nice warm mid-tone colour to work on. As I often do, I like the warm undertones of this type of paper. But as I mentioned, you could use any type of paper. I commonly use velour paper, um, recently started using Fisher 400 more, and it would be exactly the same technique that I would use to create a background like this. So I start just with the mid-tone green, and already I'm starting to think of how I want to create a sort of mottled effect. So not one solid colour all the way across, but a nice mottled effect using all of the different greens and, as you'll see later, bringing in some purple tone as well. The main aim with my background here is not just to add a nice splash of colour to the piece, but also to complement the edges of the dogs. So the main thing that I'm looking for are the areas of light and shade around the edges of the dogs and if I can contrast that nicely with the the colour that happens to be behind that area of the dog. So anywhere that there's a dark edge to the dog I will try to have some more of the lighter tones, the lighter greens behind that so that it really pops out. So I very much use this type of background to subtly complement all the way around each of the dogs and 
that really helps them to pop out from the background. So at this stage, I'm only using the pastels on their side. In fact, these backgrounds are made up usually entirely of using the pastels on their side. You want to get those nice broad marks. You don't want to get too many lines or hard edges to your marks. So by very lightly rubbing the pastel over the surface of the paper, I get a nice, smooth, easily blended type of mark. You'll see that every so often I stop applying pastel and I start to blend like this. So I'm using kind of circular motions with my fingertips here. And I'm, I'm really blending quite heavily, but you can see that the pigment isn't moving that much. And that's exactly what I want at this stage because I haven't filled the paper with pigment, so it's not able to move around um, easily on the surface of the paper just yet. So pastel matte is one of the papers that it takes a few layers applied first before the pigment actually starts to blend nicely. So don't panic at this stage if your first couple of layers of pastel really won't move and you can't really get it to go smooth. That just means that you need more pigment on the paper. And I'm in no rush to get the paper completely covered because I want some time to play with the colours that I'm going to add. I can really start to experiment with these lower layers and the colours that I add later on will mix and cover up some of this, but these colours that I add first will always shine through those later layers and that's what I'm looking to create depth and interest so that it's more than just one or two colours. It's got a really lovely rich feel because of all the different tones that I'm using. So I might add two or three layers of pastel and then give it a really good blend and then go again. And I keep doing that. You'll see in this tutorial just how many layers it actually takes to build up a background like this. So if you're finding that you can't get the pastel to go on nice and smoothly and to mix and blend together smoothly, it's probably because you haven't applied enough pastel to the paper. And I don't mean to go back in with a heavier touch and apply the pastel thickly. You really want to do it how I'm doing it here, which is very thin layers. It's a very gradual thing. And you can see in some areas already where I've got a bit more pigment on the paper, it's already starting to lose the hard edges and blend together smoothly. But there's still quite a bit to go with this. And that's great because it gives me an opportunity to add a few more colours and start to create a nice rich feel to the background. I'm also looking at the little gaps in between the dogs. Those are going to be important for ma making the dogs really pop out against the background. So another good blend. Whatever hand you work with, make sure you do some exercise with your other arm because this stuff is a good workout. It's always a good workout when I've got a big painting and I've got a big area of background to blend. This piece was about 20 inches wide, so reasonably big, but I work up to 40 inches wide. And on a painting like that, if you've got a huge area of sky or something that's got a lot of uh, blended colour, you know that you're going to have a tired arm by the end of it. And of course you could use this method to create any colour of background really. I'm giving you examples in this video to create an outdoors feel. But you could use more neutral tones and give a more interior feel or just a nice textured, mottled, neutral background that doesn't have to be anything. You could use brown tones, blue tones. Really, you could take this type of background 
in any direction in terms of color. It's really just about creating that lovely gradation between each color to the next. And you can see that I've brought in a dark purple tone as well. It's often nice if you can bring in a little hint of a complementary color within whatever the color it is that you're working with predominantly. And I really feel that those darker purple areas add a lot of interest. Can you see that it does kind of look like there's some dark purple in the background in my photo layout? So the background in the layout that I came up with really did inspire a lot of what I did here. But there have been times in the past when I've added this type of background using no photo reference because after a while, when you've created lots of these backgrounds, you have a pretty good idea how to make one work in a portrait without needing any photo reference for it. You start to get a feel for the palette of colours that might work nicely together, how to use the background to really set the main subject in front. and they become really enjoyable to create. I always love creating this type of background. It's so quick to do. And then quite often it looks really effective in the portrait, especially when you get a very detailed subject matter in front of this blurred or out of focus background. So I'm applying a lot of pressure here when I'm blending. You can see my easel move. <laughs> So don't be afraid to really scrub the pigment into the paper. There are areas where I lean a little bit lighter so that I can let more of the individual colors underneath shine through. And then when I lean more heavily, I'm really mixing those colors. So I augment the pressure that I apply throughout this. In some areas, I'm leaning very heavily. In other areas, I'm lightly touching. And the more pigment I get on the paper, the less heavily I need to blend because at some point you'll notice that the pigment just starts to move and mix into the layers underneath really easily. So you will notice that point when you've got enough pastel on the paper and it becomes easy to blend. So you'll see with this layer, just how much easier and how much more smoothly this light tone blends in. I brought this light tone in, which is grey 31. Um, you can see that it does have a green tint to it, so it's not a, a monochrome grey. But I brought this cooler colour in just to give more of a sense of the mistiness. So up until now, it's been looking quite yellow green predominantly and by bringing this lighter tone in on the top it's going to add that freshness and that misty kind of distant feeling that I want to create in the portrait. So lots and lots of blending. Pastel mat's great for this because it's got quite a smooth texture to the surface of the paper and it allows you to blend this sort of thing really smoothly without tearing your fingerprints off your fingertips. With all of the sanded papers, I would not be doing this with my fingertips. Um, certainly not with the lower layers where it's difficult to blend. I would try and use some kind of blender or sponges, something to do the, the touching of the paper for me. Maybe at this stage I would be able to lightly blend some of the very top layers. But I wouldn't normally recommend it with sanded papers because it will hurt. And then the other paper that I use, Velour. Well, it's a dream to create this type of background on. Most of the examples that I showed you at the start of the video were done on Hannibal Velour. And it feels almost velvety to the touch. So as you can imagine... 
blending heavily on that paper is never going to hurt your fingertips. That's one of the nice things about that surface. So once I've come in with the lighter colours, I can then come back through and maybe just accent a few of the dark areas again. It looks quite drastic to add some dark colour on top of that, but don't forget at this stage, it's really easy to blend all of this in. I can add more light over the top of it. I'm really just pushing and pulling the, the light and dark areas at the moment. So a little bit more of the purple tone, which I really liked against all of those lighter greens. And just perhaps bring the purple tone over here just a little bit. I liked the idea that one side would be a little bit darker than the other side. And of course that dark purple is going to appear a lot in the three dogs. So that's another good reason to use the purple in the background because there's not going to be a lot of green used in the dogs. So I can't really create colour harmony and tie the green colours into the dogs themselves. But I can bring some of the colour from the dogs out into the background and this dark purple tone appears lots throughout their coats. So as well as being complementary to the green colours in the background, it also helps a little bit with some colour harmony throughout the painting. So you can see how well that dark purple area mixed into the rest of it. So you can really afford to be quite brave with your colours when you're working on a background like this. The more you blend pigment, the more you dull it down. And in some cases, that's not something you want to do with pastel because those vibrant, um, pure colours are so beautiful. But I'm often trying to dull things down a little bit, blend and mix. And it creates a lovely textured and multi-layered appearance. So I've lost count actually of how many layers I've applied. You can see that I'm not putting each colour right over the background. I'm really picking out areas, enhancing little bits of pattern and shape. And then using the blending part really to um, tweak at it and to really make certain parts fade away and to leave other parts of the pigment more strong. I can really play with it in the blending stage. And just getting rid of any hard edges. I don't want any of the little sections of colour to have a hard edge or an outline. So the place where I probably apply the most pressure when I'm blending is around the outer perimeter of the section of colour that I'm trying to blend. Because I really want to get rid of that definition between that colour and the next colour. But at this stage it becomes so much fun because each little bit of extra pigment that I apply to the paper, it just mixes and blends with the slightest touch when I go to blend it with my fingertips. But you can see that the paper is still accepting new layers. I have nowhere near filled the tooth of the paper at this stage. And just look at how many colours I've applied. But because each layer has been so thin and I've really blended each layer into the paper, this paper can just keep going and going for quite a while with this type of pastel application.
So just look at how easily I can get rid of any hard edges now. The pigment really wants to go smooth and mix with the lower layers. Still in this area, it's still showing the marks a little bit, which still says that I need to put a bit more pastel on this area. And of course, you don't have to blend it entirely smoothly. These backgrounds can be really effective, actually, if you leave some of your rougher marks showing. You can come back through this and add a bit more texture if you want. But to me, the quickest and most simple type of background is this one, where I really just play with the blending stages and get it really, really smooth, which is the ultimate contrast for going against all of the detail in the main subjects. So the whole background done with the sides of the pastels, looking for those broad marks. And just making some final adjustments to the areas around the edges of the dog. I'm really looking at whether it's a dark section on the dog or a brighter section. And it's all about creating the contrast between the animals and their background. So it's really up to you at what point you call this type of background done. This one took me just over 20 minutes. And it's quite a large painting, so it was a reasonably large amount of area to fill. And there are times when I spend days on backgrounds. Backgrounds that have more detail and more things going on. So for me to get this type of background to work on, it's such a breeze. It makes such a big difference. I'm done with the background in less than half an hour and it doesn't take me days of concentration. But detailed backgrounds are also one of my favourite things to paint. I love when a painting really tells a story. So I'm always prepared to put that extra effort in to make an interesting background. But there's no harm in taking advantage of a really simple but effective idea sometimes too. So just some finishing touches here. brightening this area just to the top of this third dog's head because it's going to be quite dark along the top there and I want to add a bit more light colour in so that that area contrasts nicely. Last little bit of colour to go on just to further lighten this little section above the third dog. And finally everything is looking really nice and smooth those soft gradations of colour right across the background with no hard edges anywhere. And not a bit of wonder because I've really had an arm work out at this. And I bet you will too if you try this method. So I hope that you found this helpful. As I said, it's one of those types of backgrounds that I call on quite often in my work. And it always creates a lovely atmosphere and gives the feeling that I'm going for without having to go into huge amounts of detail. They're also fun to create because I just love to blend and make a bit of a mess. And that's exactly what I do to create these backgrounds. So I hope that you had fun watching this. I hope that you'll try it out in some of your own paintings. 
and if you did enjoy this then please do subscribe to me here on YouTube. I have so many videos here for free and then if you want even more check me out on Patreon where you'll find my full library of real-time tutorials and lots more as we've got a lovely community growing over there with lots of artists on different stages of their journey. But thanks very much for watching this here and until next time, happy pastling!